part of the objectives for me right now is to figure out how big the site is. So I know I have stuff down eroding down the hill and I know I have stuff coming out of the ground so far in, but I want to know if the uh, deposit extends this far. So what I'm doing is going around the perimeter of, of the area and placing test pits. This, this is the real nasty stuff. Yeah. So that I can uh, determine how extensive the site is. And then from there we can decide where we want to dig for future excavations. All of Otto Geist's collections, his archaeological collections from the 30s and 40s, are here at the UA Museum. He faced all the same logistical challenges we face today. Standards for doing archaeology were very different back then. They dug bigger areas and dug with less precision than we do today. The fact that they dug faster and more means that they generated a lot larger samples of artifacts, which is uh, useful in a lot of ways. The lack of precision for where those artifacts came from makes it hard to uh, do some of the analyses we would do on sites today. Where we try to reconstruct exactly where in a site a particular activity took place or how artifacts across a site relate to one another or the ages of artifacts in vertical location. It's hard to do that with some of the older collections. The way they worked also gives us some information that we don't capture today. At Maturak Lake we've only excavated a few square meters. So we have a very small uh, window into how space was used at that site. If you look at older excavations, they had hundreds of square meters exposed in some cases and could really see how a camp was laid out or how a, a village was organized. This is a stadia rod and it receives a shot like a laser from the total station, which then I'm able to get what we call a three-point provenience, the northing, the easting, and the z-coordinate, which would be the depth below surface for us. So it measures in exactly on our, on our grid where an artifact or a bone comes from within the excavation block. Femur head. It's just another way to map in what, what we're taking out of the excavation. It's really a backup for the uh, total station that we're using. All the dirt that we pull out of here goes through the screen. So that's like an eight inch mesh. So this is the, just a north arrow and it's also a scale, has centimeter increments. And we put this down into the excavation unit when we want to take a picture so that we know a directionality and kind of have a reference for how big the objects are that we're shooting. Definitely the trowel. We stole from the masons. <laughs> yeah, it's actually for, for laying bricks originally. But it's um, good for evenly taking soil layers off of the excavation unit. Or you don't see a flake before you feel it on your trowel tip or you hear this little tink and that usually means you've hit a flake. We don't really want to hit the bones with those trowels. We also have wooden ones so, so that we don't uh, damage the bone when we're digging. You got to go, it's super slow and meticulous so because you're just moving like millimeters of dirt at a time, you should actually see things before you scrape into them real hard. We're not just like move it all over and because we'll damage things that way. We have to have our uh, tape measure. We want to dig in levels, so 
we measure how far we've gone down below surface or if you're doing it from a datum then that way. Mostly fine and for stone tools, small flakes, but we've got already about 90 microblades. The things we do find in sites are typically the things that were brought back to a camp. They're damaged tools or worn out tools that were thrown away. That's what we see at Maturac Lake. 11 as of two days ago, mitten shaped burns for engraving bone or antler. Then we have end blades, which are these little tiny arrow point type tools. Those were used as insets at the end of organic point for actually piercing the hide of an animal, you know, as you shoot it. What we usually find is batches of tools at a place where a hunter repaired a whole tool kit or just the broken ones. That is a classic inscriber. What's the most formal inscraper we've got out of here yet? And that makes sense with the faunal remains we have there. They were hunting caribou and a part of that set of activities would have been processing the hides from the caribou. We just really opened up about 15 square meters so far in total, but there's like a good 800 square meters that could okay. be excavated that would likely still have Wow, so it's stuff. a really big It's site. really a lot bigger than I initially mm -hmm. had thought to myself. Uh, Hunter-gatherer camps are big areas. People were spread out even if the number of people was small, they, they may have occupied a big area. You know, the one way to get at it would be if there were house features here. Houses are a good way to estimate the population, and so far we haven't found any definitive houses here. So it still has the signature of being a fairly small, temporary camp at any given point in time. Mm -hmm.